it's finally time to take my own advice and put this flow meter in. I got this. Got this from Amazon. It was about 15 bucks, 14.99, something like that. And uh, well, let's start with it. This is really not a flow meter because it doesn't meter anything. It has a thermometer. But aside from that, it's basically a flow visual indicator. But everybody calls them flow meters, so I guess we'll stick with flow meter. So first things first. There's this block. Looks like it has uh, three entry points, all tapped. They're tapped all the way, which I don't know if I'm a big fan of this because I don't know how well it will seal just this little rubber O-ring. So we either get bigger O-rings or maybe use some compound in here to seal the threads. That's probably a better choice. I think what this is really for is for a water cool computer. We got some rector seal. It looks like the knot here is 14 millimeters, so I got a 14 millimeter wrench. So what we're gonna do now is get our fingers dirty. I'm pretty sure this is water safe. I mean potable water safe so it's going to be fine make sure they're all so let's see first one I can tell the o-ring is compressing that's number one wipe some of this off Got to find the right amount of force. Like my father-in-law says, sometimes too tight is also called broke. So this looks like it's made out of plexiglass, so probably don't want to exaggerate. So don't go into beast mode. Okay, so we got this now. Make sure that we don't get anything on the probe. It looks like it's going to be fine. Okay, 
so that's that. The one thing that you need, and this is the reason why I say this isn't made for a computer, because you don't get any kind of way to power this. And obviously the connectors are specifically for a computer power supply. Now, the instructions are about that. So you're going to need some kind of power supply. This is a phone power supply. It's very old. I'm going to tell you this. It's so old, it's a Nokia, okay? That's got to tell you something. And what I'm going to do here, because you don't need these two connectors, what I'm probably going to do is, this is the power, this is the only thing you need. I'm going to cut all these wires out and then just use this to solder my power supply and just use this so I can have a connector that I can remove. Make sure I don't cut the actual power that I need. Okay. So I'm going to cut all this out. So we're only left with the power. Now, with this one, I'm going to need this and this. So I will cut out this too as well. So now we got this too right here. Plug it in. It's perfect. We're going to have power. We need to remove it. Well, cut the wire. Now, before we do anything, we need to put some shrink tube. So I'm going to put one that will probably go over the whole thing. And then we're going to have to use shrink tube for the other ones. But it looks like they're going to have to go on this other part. Okay. connection is right here. I'm going to plug it in. Okay. Now, I'm going to plug this in. Let's see what happens. Eighteen point three six whatever Celsius. It looks like there is a jumper in the back. I think if you take that out, it will transform it into Fahrenheit. Now that we have that done, we're going to have to connect it to the hoses. Now, the options are you can connect it to... I mean, I could just take the return and plug it in, but that will only tell us the temperature coming out of the tube, and that's really not what we're interested in. So we have to take a piece out of the input. This right here is the water input. This is the output. We're going to have to cut a piece out of the output. Um, it's fairly long, so I want to make sure that if I decide to make a clip or something for this to stay over here, I have enough. So I think I'm going to cut it right about here. And I think I'm going to use scissors. And there's no time like today. It's still full of water. Okay, so now it's just a matter of connecting them. Put the clamps on. If you still have the original hose that came with a K40, slightly undersized for these fittings. So it's almost impossible to put on, plus the connectors, they just slide over. So I think this is designed for a slightly bigger hose. But I managed to get it in basically three quarters of the way in, and it looks like it's super tight. Plus, it's going to sit right on top of this. So if it starts leaking, then I'll be able to tell. I'm going to go ahead and put in the other one, and then after that, we can probably test it. So it's all connected now. I'm going to go ahead and put it right here. Try to 
make sure it stays out of the water but so we can actually see it let's see like this so I'm going to turn it on you can see the pump is working and this is working now thing that I didn't notice is you want to make sure that the inlet is perfectly straight because if you bend it just a little bit it stops working or if you go like this it's it looks like it's not working at all initially I thought it was the position of it like it would not work perfectly straight but it looks like it has to do with the with the actual inlet now I don't know if the output does the same thing doesn't look like it it's just the inlet it has to be straight 